Shurakomi, estamos con Arthur Suida y vamos a hacerle una pequeña entrevista. Buenas de la Ciudad de México. <risa> este, primero que nada, ¿qué es lo que más le motiva? ¿Pensar, componer, este, pintar? ¿Qué te gusta más? Drawing, painting, writing, composing, writing. I like them all equally. For me, uh, yeah, for all, for, I like them all equally. I, I am, uh, for me, my writing is as important as it's like anything pictures. And for me, drawing is part of painting. It's one of the preliminary steps. You draw first, then you paint. You, you, you conceptualize first, then you draw, and then you paint. What are the biggest influences? What biggest influences? What are my biggest influences? What are my biggest influences? I think we, I think writers, we writers. I'm a fantasy writer and a fantasy illustrator. My my classification is as a comics creator. A comics creator is kind of rare in the industry. It's somebody who actually writes all the stories and draws all the stories as well. There are very few. Uh, in mainstream that I can only think of. There's me and uh, Frank Miller, who does Batman, is another one. Um, uh, and I, I can't think of another one. So they're, they're very rare. Um, so what's the question again now? Sorry. Oh, my own ones. Uh, oh, yeah, so my own ones are, uh, uh, I would start saying, so we writers and we illustrators, we're influenced by everything we see in pop culture. So, uh, uh, especially in movies, so old movies, and more great movies. Uh, uh, we, we have a tendency as writers and illustrators to actually feel very good memory of the, the way the brain memorizes information is actually ridiculous. And uh, so illustrators generally have a very good memory. So we memorize and we categorize and we create a, a mental encyclopedia, a mental dictionary for ourselves of all the films and all the TV shows that we've ever seen in life. The ones we don't, that we don't think are so good, they get discarded and pushed by the wayside. But the ones that are, that, are, that are good, that we like, they stick in our memories for a long time. And these are the source materials that we draw from when we're actually working on a project. Uh, so, for myself, uh, I'll let you translate that, and then uh, you want to translate that, and then I'll uh, no. I'll, I'll keep going. And then okay, um, like for myself, the early films of Ray Harryhausen, he was a stop stop uh, stop motion animator. Did uh, Jason and the Argonauts, and uh, uh, he was a student for the filmmaker who made the first King Kong movie. And, uh, he did all those movies in the 1960s and the 1970s ahead the dinosaurs and the animated monsters, so I grew up on those, grew up on all the horror films, all the Hammer films, uh, the Universal Studio, Frankenstein, Dracula, uh, and then, then later on in life, uh, you start to spread out from that media, and you watch uh, some of the other films like Alien, uh, Picard Named Desire, uh, Put the Bed in the Ugly, that's actually my favorite movie of all time. So, when we're watching when I'm watching a movie, I'm, I'm, for me, I'm, it feels to me like I'm in class, like I'm in school, and I'm studying a great storyteller, and I'm trying to learn how he tells his stories so I can learn those skills and add those skills to the skills that I already have, so that I can write stories that when he to school, go at these directors and these filmmakers. Um, and in comics, uh, I, I grew up on the Marvel comics in the 1960s. Uh, I owned all those comics. So I know all those comics. But I know all those stories by heart. So, uh, uh, so this is basically the palette as a writer that we draw from. Uh, this is the palette as a painter that we draw from as well. Also, all the people that we meet in life, as I said, illustrators tend to be very, very keen observers of, uh, of, per of personalities, and we categorize those as well. We we uh, create a little encyclopedia for ourselves. So when we're painting characters, uh, we're drawing from our our encyclopedia of people that we've met, people that we've known, uh, ourselves at the top of the list. Um, so uh, how would I react in a certain situation? What would I do? And when, when I'm putting together a design for an illustration, this is, this is how I'm thinking first. And then once, once I get all this down, once I get my story that I want my painting to tell, 
Um, then the rest of it is, is, is kind of the technical work of, of putting on the paint. But it's, uh, what I'm figuring out first is what is the story that I want to tell with one picture. And I want to try to tell a whole complete story. If somebody looks at my picture, well, they're going to read a story. Into it. And if I'm, if I'm, if I'm successful, um, then the viewers who, who uh, see my... Uh, oh, for instance, here's a good one. We'll see my, uh, my painting, we'll see the painting, and they will start to think, I think I see a story here, and they're my, and it starts their mind to the story behind the painting. If an illustrator can get a couple of steps, then I think he, uh, he's, uh, he's done a good job. So, uh, his work is good to work. When your work fails, it's maybe when you do a painting and people look at it and it suggests a little story. So, so the challenge is always to, to basically avoid the image capture any Mine.